Hey, Mila Grushin here from Exceptional Explorers. Thank you so much for joining. Today, I want to talk a bit about phonological processes. So is your child currently saying Nana for banana or Wawa for water? And you're wondering, is this normal? Do they need to have more sounds? Do they need to start producing all the syllables within the word? Do I need to reach out to a speech language therapist? Do they need an evaluation? If you've ever had any of these questions, then this is the right segment for you. So I wanna begin by saying that before the age of three, children cannot physically produce many of the sounds. And therefore, their brain creates new rules. It simplifies speech sounds, and it makes it easier for them to speak. So these rules that they come up with, this is what we refer to as phonological processes. And all children use phonological processes when they begin to speak. As a matter of fact, there is often a hierarchy of which phonological processes they're going to um, stop using and when. Um, and these are just um, averages, really. It doesn't mean that, you know, at a specific um, month, they're going to master a particular group of sounds. But generally, there is an order in which these sounds come in and in which um, they stop using phonological processes. So for most kids, you do not need to teach them. These sounds will come in naturally as their coordination improves of their articulated, which is, you know, their tongue, the movements of the jaw, the opening of their mouth, the buildup of pressure in their mouth, and so on. However, if children are using a lot of the phonological processes beyond the years when that is normal, or they're using processes that are not a part of normal development, that is when you would want to seek out some help. So what would we consider a normal um, mastery of sounds? So generally speaking, children begin with labial or lip sounds. And that is because they're very obvious. They're right there in front. That's the first thing they see when you speak to them. So they include sounds made by our lips, such as the puzz, the buzz, the m sounds. And that is why words like papa and mama are one of the first words to come in. Those sounds are usually followed by glottal or throat sounds like k, g, and that is because um, even though they're not as um, evident and they're not as visual as the labial sounds, you still get a lot of tactile feedback. Those vibrations, the movements of the throat, there is buildup of pressure that they feel. Um, those sounds are generally followed by the t, d sounds, and again, um, it has a similar reasoning because um, even though they're hidden in the mouth, um, there is a lot of uh, buildup of pressure. So of course, sounds that don't have as much pressure and not visible, they tend to come in much later. And according to some um, developmental charts, as late as six or seven years old, and those are sounds like the r, the l, the s, and the th sounds. So what can you do to help your child along before reaching out for a speech language evaluation? Um, my recommendation would be to start with some rhyming books. And you've probably heard me say that before during um, different videos and different posts made at Exception Explorers, but rhyming is so important and that is why there are so many children's uh, books with rhymes. So what rhyming does, it uh, really emphasizes um, sound groups that are similar to kids. They start to notice these patterns and they begin to respond to them. So definitely rhyming books, maybe even having children identify rhymes within a rhyming story, um, maybe differentiate some of the first sounds within rhyming words. So some of the books um, that I've liked to use are El Is Your Mama a Llama, um, Sheep in the Jeep, There Is a Walket in My Pocket, are just some that um, I've used with my own kids while um, working on phonological awareness and making them aware of the sounds within words. 
and of course if they are um, reaching those uh, developmental ages where these sounds are to come in they're more likely to say them the way we uh, say them but if not just let them practice and say it in their own way because um, in most cases they're definitely hearing them they're just not yet able to say them but um, this kind of brings up an important point that if your child didn't have a hearing screening or um, an audiological evaluation and there are a lot of sounds that are not present or phonological processes are atypical and you're not used to hearing other kids or, um, speak that way, then you may want to reach out starting to, you know, with your pediatrician asking for a hearing screening and an audiological evaluation. Um, and maybe asking for a referral to an audiologist because you do want to rule out any hearing difficulties and that is something as a speech therapist I will often ask um, parents of my little clients is did they have a hearing screening and audiological evaluation before coming in for any um, speech correction or any work of phonological processes. Um, in addition to other activities other than rhyming books, I love um, clapping and jumping games. So um, you may want to clap and jump um, the number of syllables within words uh, to make it more exciting. Uh, you could add um, colorful rubber pads on your floor. If they're not available and you don't have them, using even stuffed toys or cars are laid out on the floor and children could jump from one to another uh, for each syllable they hear within the word that's great abc puzzles uh, most of us with little kids definitely have some abc puzzle or a version of one in the house so definitely singing the abc song while building the puzzles that's also great because they begin to have an association between um, the, the letter and the sound that it makes um, I just want to emphasize when you get to the middle of the song a lot of people tend to sing LMNOP and a lot of um, children really think that it is just one letter uh, that is called LMNOP they do not recognize that it is really five letters within that um, sound so it is important to pause and point to each letter of your puzzle and um, with the little ones and something I'm currently doing with my seven month old I'm doing a lot of imitation games and of course they start out with just imitating um, smiles or um, open mouth uh, position and they eventually move into imitation of sounds and they start out with labial or lip sounds because of those are the ones they're able to see like ma 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 pa 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 and um, as the baby shows signs and understanding of such imitation games I will move on to um, other things and um, other sounds that may be um, a little bit more challenging and they could include again rhyming words or some um, back sound uh, syllables like ka 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 and ga 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 so those are just some suggestions to start getting your um, children um, attuned and really listening to different sound and words and helping those sounds come in on time um, if you have any additional questions do reach out and um, we'll be posting some links to um, um, charts and our developmental um, norms for when phonological processes are supposed to be replaced by um, sounds that um, you would hear in, in adult speech. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, bye.